right. Sorry I didn't announce this, guys, but uh, <clears throat> it has come to my attention that this subject matter seems to be a matter of dispute or debate amongst some of those with whom I'm currently working. Now, I'm not talking clients. I'm talking about people that are in the positions that are supposed to be doing these things. So what I want to talk about, I'm going to go over, is going to be different lit litmus tests. What are the criteria? What establishes them? And most importantly, how to use them and use them correctly. So I will... <clears throat> Uh, I'll start with something simple. When you're talking about a litmus test, okay, let's talk about what are the principles behind the test? In other words, why are we even doing this? It's a good question because that's always question number one. And in law, those are expressed in things like legal maxims, Oops, I'll just do it this way and make life easy on you. So if we're talking about a fundamental principle, one of those expressed in Latin Okay, this is an example of a principle of why we would do something like this. So this principle, when we're talking about a law, something in the land, on the land, in the air, in the water, is law is the science of what is good and just. So that is the motivation or motive for performing the test. So. <clears throat> Let's start getting into kind of the nuts and bolts and the sciences of various litmus tests. I've gone over this one on the show. I've shown this little this thing's called a degree wheel. And one of the one of the first things that you need to do when you're establishing calibration, okay, in a piece of machinery, there are criteria for that. So to kind of pick up where I left off, I'm going to read what one of the criteria is here. And in the beginnings of this litmus test, what's known as finding top dead center, is um, there are one of three methods. First one is positive stop. Number two is what's called a dial indicator. Number three is positive stop through a spark plug hole, uh, with heads installed, uh, bolt a uh, pointer to cylinder block. Sorry, I'm, my eyeballs are, I don't have my glasses with me. Uh, a heavy wire or metal strip pointer, heavy enough for a hold a, yeah, for a hold on a permanent position. If cylinder heads are removed, use either position stop or dial indicator. Now, when we're talking about degreeing an engine, okay, there's a lot of science behind an engine, which I won't go into, but one of the causes for finding top dead center is because you're trying to find the calibration, the origin, the origination point, or zero, right? That's the whole point. You got to find out where the hell zero is, because without zero, there's no starting point. So now that we have found zero, let's go into the establishment of a cause when we're talking about in law. One example I've shown of a litmus test, and when we're talking about balancing three elements, and the three elements are advantage, Profit and gain. Okay, so now we know within this litmus test criteria, 
we have three elements that we have to deal with. We have to deal with advantage, profit, and gain, and we got to balance these suckers, okay? So you think balancing two things is difficult. you got to try balancing three or more. This is where it gets real tricky. So we end up having to employ, <coughs> in law, knowing that these things are called, not entitlements, these things are called emoluments, okay? Now, one example that I've used on the show in various other places is a mathematical litmus test. And because we're talking about civility, we're talking about in addition to or adding these things together and then dividing them or subtracting them either way. <clears throat> but just as for the sake of simplicity, I'll put the E equals because this is just one such short example. Some of this is recap for some of you, so that's okay, but don't worry about it. So the first thing we have to start with is dividing up the criteria. So let's see here. We have advantage, we have profit, and we have gain. Okay, so now that we've established the three elements individually, okay, now we got to figure out a way to factor in the others to find a balance between the three. And one of those is you take an example of the gain over here, an example of the gain over here. You take an example of the advantage down here, an example of the advantage over here, and then you put an example of profit and profit. So now we have just assembled a short version of a litmus test. It's very simple. So this is one such methodology or one such criteria when trying to find a balance between these three things that are supposed to be equal, right? Equity on the equity scale. <clears throat> Again, your version of this may look completely different. This is just an example of one such way to construct this. Now, you could also take this because you're one of the arguments that has come up, and it's a very good argument when you're talking about prosecutions. Because we've already established division, so we're already talking about algebraic expression. So maybe we should take this, make these multiplication signs, okay? That's another way of running the test. And knowing full well that the factors are going to factor out differently once you replace these variables with, not, with for example, with a numerical value. And this is where the difference between um, odd numbers, even numbers, prime numbers comes into play. So, for example, if you wanted to play it with prime numbers, it would be very simple. All these things become threes. Okay, so no matter how you run this, if they're all threes, they're all you're always going to get the same answer. In a perfect world, that's exactly how it's supposed to work. Here's the problem. You got that human element comes into play. And all things are never equal, right? So now, uh oh, so where does the where do we have to go from there? That's a good question. So one of the things that we here's an example of a standard test that I've used throughout my career, knowing that where we want to start is zero. Okay, that's that's always your origination point. Now, in the business world, positives are expressed in blue, negatives are expre expressed in red. So starting at zero. Anything on the positive side, okay, is expressed in a blue, right? So we have positive here. Now, 
we have negative here. So this is where we end up with a, whoops, screwed that up a little bit because this is actually supposed to be a blue line because it is to the right, okay, of zero, so it's a positive. And this is to the left and below zero, so these are representative of negatives. So, now, what do these things look like moving forward? Well, down here, we have two negatives. Pretty easy, right? Well, here, we have, it's not so easy, okay? Because, though, we are um, above the line, which is positive, we're still behind on the negative side of zero in this quadrant. So what does this actually start to look like? So here is what we have is um, this is where we end up with negative shrink. Whoops. These two are examples of negative shrink. Now, this is all things are correct, all things are equal, all things are perfect, right? That's what we want right there. Well, knowing that there are also all things can be equal on the other side of the on the other side of the equation as well, which is where we get the negative times negative equals positive one. <coughs> so let's talk about these two. And this is where most of your work is done, believe it or not. And so what this looks like, over here we have these things are not equal, okay? We have not equal here, and here. So, well, at least now we kind of have an idea of what the basics of the test look like. And as far as what you do with all of the different criteria that you run through a matrix something like this, you have to figure out, well, first of all, you want it to be here because here is total loss, right? Everything is a total loss down here. So this is where we go into the, the criteria of what we refer to in business as a write-off, okay? This is a write-off. That you're not going to do anything with. This is what we refer to as sales or profits, uh, gains in some form or way, okay? This is where we try to operate and keep as much as we can in the business world right up in there, knowing that most of the work takes place in these two boxes over here and over here to make it that all things are equal positively and the everything works the way it's supposed to work. So as you can tell, there's a lot of work that goes into maintaining this, right? Well, you can't have this unless you know and understand these other three do exist and what it takes to work in those areas and maintain them to an acceptable level. I mean, there's going to be a certain amount of, um, you know, this is where all of your bickering happens. It's all around in here, right? So knowing and understanding that that's where all of your bickering happens. Now, you know why when, you know, whoever comes home from work is like, I don't want to talk. I don't want to eat. I want to kick my shoes off because my feet feel like they're that big and I just want to be left alone. So now that we've established what that looks like and why, um, now we can move on. So how do we take and 
deal in these two things and make these two things either end up here or here. Because we know one of these two, and when it's all said and done, it's one of these two is the end result, right? It's either a total write-off or it's something good or tangible. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> like I said, this is just the model of what we use to try to keep as much up here as we can, okay? So, I mean, and there's a lot of moving parts and, and all of the rest of this stuff. So, for example, when we're looking and we are dealing in the one of these areas, there has to be a methodology, right? There has to be a science. There has to be some criteria or this whole thing, to, you know, just just drops into chaos. And actually, I did find my glasses. So <clears throat> let's let's pick up the book and we will talk about, for example, what some of those criteria might look like. OK. Knowing that this is run with a in a corporate in a corporate world, we have a board of directors and we have CEO and I've gone over all that. <coughs> so if we're going to make a decision within this group of people to decide what how much are we going to keep here and how much are we going to accept down here? It just it is what it is. So the criteria as we go through all of this starts to look something like this. The group must have the authority to take the action it purports to take. Okay, well, this is within our corporation, so we have that authority. Um, the jurisdiction must be given, it cannot be assumed. Groups sometimes assume powers they do not have. Now, what does that mean here? So, when you're talking about in a jurisdiction, in a corporate world, that means what department? For example, are we talking about a human resource policy? Are we talking about a fleet issue? Are we talking about an inventory issue? Are we talking about something that's going to come out in a press release? I mean, <clears throat> and, you know, we decide in law that's called jurisdiction. In the corporate world, that's just referred to as what department is going to do the heavy lifting. So now there must be a meeting of the decision making group. Ah. That gets pretty interesting. Why? Why would there be a meeting? When authority is vested in any group, it is vested in the group collectively and not merely in an individual members, members of the group. To make a decision, uh, the group must meet and make up its collective mind. Ah, there you go. So now you got to start talking about things like strategy. Oh, Cool. So let's talk about that. Let's put that up on the board. Okay. Strategy. Well, in the corporate world, what's the one thing that we need to we need to make sure we maintain at all times? That is consumer confidence. Right? pick up the phone and call my company and say I need the thing that you supposedly have and I say I have it and you come and I do you come to my location and I don't have it you're gonna be pretty upset right so a proper notice of the meeting must be given to all members of the group all members of the group are entitled to such a notice of uh, of the time place and purpose of the meeting as will enable them to attend and participate Failure to give such notice will invalidate actions taken at the meeting. Aha, this is important. You don't know that one of, this, one of the members of the, um, <clears throat> of the board of directors has some vested interest in this. Well, what's the vested interest? Well, if you don't notify the member of the board um, of the meeting, and something something happens and it comes out later on that the vested interest was, oh, uh, this person has a relative who's going to be part of the group decision making. 
um, okay, now let's now we're going to talk about bias because um, is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? And why? Right. So that's why I said there's a lot of moving parts that go into this whole this whole process. There must be a quorum at the meeting. Uh huh. All right. A quorum is a sufficient number or proportion of the members as uh, will qualify those present to act for the entire membership. A quorum is a majority of the members qualified to act unless a lesser number is given that authority by proper authority or a higher number is especially required. A member who is not entitled to vote, remember that bias we were talking about, is it bad or is it good, on a particular question cannot be counted to make a quorum for voting on that question. Now, one of the examples <clears throat> that I gave that would be an example of a lesser group making this decision. Remember, I gave one example that we had. We were faced with a conundrum of we kept getting these fines because we weren't turning in enough battery cores. So how the hell are we going to overcome this problem, right? So the quorum we assembled was in a, was folks within the company who work and deal primarily in the uh, commercial aspect of that part of the business that would be able to, number one, they had the authority in the company to make the decision. Number two, we've already extended the resources to put them in the field. And um, number three, it was how are we going to train them, write a policy to train them to handle this hazardous material properly, effectively, not make a bigger mess than what it was when they got there and to achieve the desired end result, which is not have to pay those ridiculous, stupid fines anymore. So there must be a question before the group upon which it can make a decision, which is the example of I just gave you. Number six, there must be an opportunity to debate the question. Okay, so if the question is, the company is not meeting its end, hauling its end of the log on this, this problem that we're supposed to be um, maintaining or managing this hazardous material, we need to, we need to collectively decide, assemble that quorum, that, per, that group that I just talked about, to solve that problem. Okay, so that would be the opportunity to debate the question when we come bring those, at, bring those people into the meeting, say, here's our problem, you know, you're the folks in the field, what do you need from me to help make this process easier for you? What resources, what materials, um, what other training, you know, what special equipment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The question must be decided by taking a vote. Pretty Seems pretty simple, right? And guess who got to vote on this question? And that would have been the commercial managers who participated in the forum or in the quorum, I'm sorry. <clears throat> and one of the things they voted on was is they needed proper hazmat gear. Um, that was, to me, that was a no-brainer. But to them, it was a concern. Why? Because they had their people actually out doing the job. So as far as being a boss is concerned, collectively speaking, we did a good job of training those people because their first priority was their team. You see how this works? So, um, number eight, there must be a uh, there must be a majority vote to take an action or decide a question. Okay. So, in other words, in a situation like the one we're talking about, um, as far as when we're talking about where to where to where we're going to put such resources, like. Uh, yeah, we know we need to supply hazmat gloves, we need to supply battery carriers, we need to supply acid cleanup kits and all of those things. Um, you know, that goes back into the inventory mechanism. What areas have what's requested, knowing full well we've never done this before. So let's pick a number and we decided collectively on, I think it was 20, right? 20 was the baseline. As it came out, <laughs> we ended up in needing 
more we ended up needing three times that what we ended up on was needing 60 because of the 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 elements in most of these cases so we ended up in spending three times more on the on the safety gear but at the end of the day we didn't have uh any any injuries within the company or we didn't have any complaints any environmental complaints so it was money well spent as far as we were concerned so number eight i'm sorry number nine there must be no fraud trickery deception resulting in the injury of another member okay goes back to the safety on this one their their first priority was their safety again as i said we taught them well we taught them to consider the safety of their of their team and their market and of course their customer and their business and all those other things so and of course to be valid any decision or any action decision of a body must not violate any applicable law constitutional provision and that was where we took the copy of the policy okay I'm just going to use this one because it's at my fingertips we took that we took a copy of our policy handed it over to the legal department and say here you tell me is there going to be any problem with this and of course the answer was no so we executed the we executed the uh, we executed that particular campaign now when the law becomes the thing that we need to question okay <laughs> this is where it really starts to get hairy because just the same way is if I have somebody working in this area and trying to clean up a mess and I, I can tell you they know there's a mess there they know they just don't know how to do it right so when example when I walk in and I drop in something like this on them and say if you had to assess it would it look something like this and they can sit down and they can look at that and they can go oh crap uh, yeah I guess that that does look like what it is if I were to, to put it down on paper because um, is this an example of something that is lawful uh-huh well again knowing that that word let's talk about that word here that word as we established in the beginning was emoluments not entitlements right uh-oh we've got a huge problem now so again it's not a matter of is there enough blame to go around well i just showed you there's enough blame to go around that's not the issue the issue is what does cleanup look like <clears throat> so here's where we are in the here in the now and this is why i tell everybody pay attention don't take my word for it look very very closely to what's going on The good news is, Supreme Court, United States, is pretty smart people, right? If there's one thing that they do know, they know the difference between the three pillars of the Republic and the four pillars of the bar, right? So, if we have to walk in and we have to start saying, no, 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 dude, this is our style and form of government this four pillared thing right this is the judiciary we've allowed you to use this process right to ensure domestic tranquility right why? Because that is what, that's what the preamble says. Beginning of the Constitution, the very first element of their contract. Okay? So, now, here's what has happened 
over the course of this time. Remember, we've had this pissing contest between the legislative branch, right? And the executive branch. This is all of those, this is that back and in for that political shit show going on right now, right? So, in the meantime, while these guys are fighting back and forth, you've got these guys down here actually doing something. Pay very close attention to what's happening. What is one of the first, one of the most first things that they love to do? And I've said this 10,000 times, knowing that we're talking about the three pillars of our republic. We already know what the subject matter is. That's the emoluments of government. Okay. Well, their first best weapon. There's no jurisdiction. In other words, that's not a power we delegated to government. So I don't care what side of this political pissing contest you're on. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to settle the whole damn thing for you, which is exactly what they did, right? That's referred to as a bar to prosecution, and I'll show you what that looks like. Got that little sucker around here somewhere. Here it is. Supreme Court of the State of Florida. There's a bar to prosecution. I've shown this on the show and I've uploaded it for you guys to watch and read and enjoy and all of those fun things. So, now that we've established no jurisdiction, we've established a bar to prosecution, now we have a ton of work we got to do. Remember those, we got to decide what falls in the write-offs, right? The write-off criteria down here. What's going up in here into the all things equal in the plus side? Uh, what are we going to deal with as far as positive shrink? What are we going to deal with as far as negative shrink goes, right? So that's why I said there's a, there's there's been a whole lot of the um yeah this is not a power that we delegated to you this domestic whoops violence is a political argument. It is not a judicial argument. There is no jurisdiction for that. That's a political question. That's That falls under the political question doctrine. It's the Article 4, Section 4. It's very clear about that. Right? They agreed. They said, no jurisdiction. Love that. So, now that here's what pissed off the attorneys. They can no longer take this subject matter down into this branch. It's done. It's gone. We're out of here. What you can bring in there, okay, what can you bring in there? What do they have subject matter jurisdiction over? Well, assault, battery, right? And it, Oh, excuse me. Any high crimes and misdemeanors, yet the yet the yet yet the yet the yet the yet. Anything that falls under the political question doctrine. Put that up in here. Right. Uh, political. Well, I can spell today. Question doctrine that goes into here where it belongs back into that quorum. Okay, now so remember this all began in the legislature. We're going to end it in the legislature. We now have the support of the court, we have the support of the executive branch. Why? How do we know that? What did Trump just come out and say he was going to do? He was going to declassify every single bit of everything. Could that be construed as let these facts be submitted to a candid world? 
Um, I think I've read that somewhere once. That was in the Declaration of Independence, as I recall. So this is why when we practice the Declaration of Independence, right, in the quorum where it belongs, this is why these things actually start to make sense. Because if we go back to the original motivation, right, the cause for assembling the quorum, uh, law is the science of what is good and just. Um, let's see here. Oops. Domestic violence. Uh, I hope I spelled that right. That's under uh, Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution. Here's what else the court has also said. You are not going to change the Constitution. The Supreme Court has forbidden the legislature from um, making those changes. In other words, what they're saying is, is no, Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians, Martians, whoever the hell you think you are, you ran for that office in the legislature. You signed up for it. You're receiving those government emoluments to make that decision. Take your head out of your ass and make the decision. If you do it right, we'll tell you. If you do it wrong, we'll tell you that too. But in the here and the now, that's your job, Article One branch. That's how it works. So, in the meantime, what is the other thing that we've that we've discovered? And the oversight committees are really pissed at me for this because guess what? Bill Barr is not going to defend this anymore. This is gone. This is going away. This is bye bye. See ya. It's one of those malicious designs to be thwarted, right? So, so I said, this is one of those things of, well, now I know what the hell you idiots were up to while I was at work with your infrastructure projects. I think you're so damn smart. I've forgotten more about this crap than you dumb shits will ever know. Here's my problem. Like everybody else, and I know my inadequacies. I don't need anybody to tell them to give me a give me a grand tour of them. <clears throat> Just like every one of you, I am a human being. I've made a crap ton of mistakes, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this first. So if there were any mistakes that were made, I'm the one that makes those mistakes. This is my baby. This was my project. If anything's going to screw it up, it's going to be my fault. And so... The good news is, is the court said, well, because there's no jurisdiction, oops, man, what was wrong with my head today? There's no jurisdiction, right? None. Now we have to take that back over to the legislature and say, all that family law entitlement, Guess what the court agreed with? The court agreed with the fact that that is nothing more than shit made up. Get rid of it. You're done. It's not the, it's not the task that we put you there to do, to take your power and give it to somebody else. That is a separation of powers issue. If there is a domestic violence claim, that's handled in the legislature, the Article 1 branch, the Article 4, Section 4. I didn't write it. It's what it says. So, <clears throat> this is the part where you take those no findings. Everybody's gotten a bunch of those letters. I've got three or four of them myself. We can't find where there was anything that was ever 
where Mr. Hallett ever did anything wrong. There's no evidence to support the claim. All right. Well, because they have this case that they have called in error. That's a judicial error, by the way. Domestic violence. That's not a judicial power. That's a legislative power. So for them to put in a case number with the letters DV in it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever the case numbers are. This is word salad. No jurisdiction. Get them the hell out of here. What does that look like? Remember that branding we were talking about? Those fake lists that shit made up? Here's where that's going. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. And this is how we wipe the board through litmus testing. And we are done here. That said, I'm going to upload this into YouTube, and I hope this answers the questions of multiple people who have been asking me this and said they wanted me to put it up on the board so they could get a better view of it. And without all the hoopla of the show and all of that other fun stuff that we do. So anyway, much love, guys. I'll answer the comments here in a little bit. Peace and chicken grease.